good evening and assalamu alaikum. Um, uh, I will not take a lot of time and I didn't prepare my slide as well because I told I don't have much time uh, to present it. Um, first of all, I would like to uh, tell you guys about Rohingya, uh, 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 sorry, Rohingyans in Myanmar. Rohingya have been facing uh, genocide, persecution, uh, uh, all these things for many decades. And this woman, be, uh, because we are talking about women, I'm going to focus more on women. This woman, uh, when we talk about persecution, genocide, a big, big words, it's not just the big words that we see. In that big words, a lot of uh, individually people are uh, faced through uh, like rape, torture, uh, you know, different, different stuff, horrible stuff that uh, we all can imagine. And um, before this, there was no uh, woman voices, uh, especially in Malaysia. Um, like, like we all know that Rohingya have been facing uh, persecution for many decades, but people only get to know since 2012 when there is the internet and people are coming out to talk about it and people, even the media was saying different uh, stuff. Uh, the Myanmar government was accusing that Rohingya actually is the one who killing themselves, burning the Buddhist houses and all these things, where people like Rohingya journalists and Rohingya activists came out and said that, look, we are the victim. We are the one who facing all these things. And when we talk about women and children, they are the, like, double victims. They are facing a, a, a problem from the government um, uh, as well as the men, you know, in, in, in the country. Because uh, uh, Rohingya's uh, social structure has been destroyed uh, by the government. It means uh, we are, many of us, about 90% of us, maybe uh, some people say even 99% worldwide Rohingyans are illiterate. And our movement has been restricted. We cannot ma marry the, uh, whenever we want. We cannot give birth. We cannot build our house. Many, many things that uh, we cannot do. And we are like living in an open prison. And uh, since 2012, many uh, Rohingya women, especially many Rohingya women and girls, fled from the country to save their lives. Uh, after facing rape, torture uh, by the military and the, by the Buddhist uh, community in that uh, uh, villages. When they flee from the country, they cannot flee by passports. Many people in Malaysia, they ask why you came here by boat? Why you came, why you cross the border illegally? Why you cross, uh, break our laws? The, the answer is very simple. Our identity, our documents, our citizenship had been confiscated for many years. And we have become stateless within our own country. Therefore, we have to, if we want to save our life, we have to cross the borders illegally. There's the only way. And when we talk about illegal way, there are uh, issues of ma uh, uh, making monies. Many Rohingya girls and women I have met personally since 2012 have been uh, uh, tortured very badly and raped by the traffickers again, again, and again. I even have met a uh, woman, uh, her name is Jannat. She got pregnant and then she came to Malaysia, she was sold to another person because there was no one to release her, pay for her to, to enter Malaysia. Uh, uh, the, and the uh, trafficker doesn't want to keep, keep her there anymore because she's no more used, right? She's already pregnant. And she was just thrown to someone else in Malaysia. When I asked her, do you know the father of this baby? She looked at my face, eyes to eyes, she cried and she said, you know what, I don't know. I don't know because there's not only one man who raped me. And when you talk about rape, uh, uh, tortured, they also about, uh, happen like um, uh, child, there's a lot of child girls were sold into marriages, like child brides. After this trafficker bring them to Thailand border and the trafficker will do whatever they want, example is rape, and then they will uh, ask the Rohingya men in Malaysia to buy, do you want to buy a woman or girls? And they will sell these women into marriages. And these girls are as young as eight, seven, 12 years old. In our organization, we have uh, this girl called, uh, her name is Mamtas. She is 16 years old now. She fled uh, from the uh, Bangladesh uh, IDP camps in Situe in 2015. And when and she came to Malaysia to save her life because in IDP camp again there's a lot more uh, problems that happen. I don't want to uh, go Pacific. We don't have time. And um, 
she just get on the boat the way the, the, the rest of the people are getting on the boat and coming to the Malaysia. The traffickers uh, say that, oh, it's okay, you know, we will help you. We know you are having problems, we'll help you to enter Malaysia. You know, that kind of uh, nice words they will put uh, to them. And these girls, with the hope, they will come. After coming to Thailand, entering the Thailand camp, they, the trafficker will do whatever they need. And for the money, they will sell these girls. And this girl was raped. When she came, she was only 12 years old. After she, uh, she was in Thailand border camp, the uh, one Kilian uh, camps in Th Thai uh, Malaysia border, she was kept there for three months. After three months, she was bought, she was sold to a, a guy, a Rohingya guy, age, I think, 30 years old, 27 to 30 years old, I guess, and um, and then she forced to get married because this man want to marry her. Uh, they say, I bought you, you know, for me to marry and stuff like that. Soon after that, she got pregnant. And now she's a mother of two. She just have uh, her second baby two months ago. And uh, when we ask, what do you see the hope for your, she have a one son and one daughter. So for her, she, she always said, you know what? I want to educate my daughter more than my son. Because if I have educations, if I know my rights, if I have a voice to speak up, today I won't be this person. And I don't want to see the same mamtas in my daughter, you know, uh, 20, 30 years later. And uh, as an uh, organization, Rohingya Women Development Network is the first Rohingya Women-led organization was founded to help these women to build women leadership so that we all come out and speak up for our rights. We have very, very few Rohingya women activists coming uh, up, speaking about all these issues. Even though Rohingya women and girls are the, the victim of victim. And we are building a, a strong woman. Example, Mamtas, she see things. She, she want to change us for her life, not only for herself, because she also want to say, we want our rights back. And if you talk about Rohingya problem, there's a lot of issues have to be talked. There's a lot, a lot of stuff have to talk. And Rohingya women also face uh, uh, domestic violence as well, like the rest of the other community. But Rohingya is a bit different is because they don't know beating a wife is a wrong. They don't know it's wrong. They say when a daughter go to the mom and say, the mom, I was beaten by my husband for no reason. And the mother will say, that it's okay, you are a woman. I was, I was beaten too, I tolerated. Your grandmother uh, beaten too, tolerated. We have no option. This is how we have to go. And there's no role model. There's no one to say that, look, you can be like me. And we hope RWDN, Rohingya Women Development Network, will be a, 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 a voice, a, a leadership that we can show uh, to the community so that we all, like, we, we all have different uh, tragedy uh, story in our lives. And whatever have made us is uh, actually is the strongest part of us that make us brave, make us strong. Today I'm here to speak about all these things. It's also not because I'm a, from a privileged family where I didn't, uh, from Myanmar where I didn't face all these things. I do face all these things. I came here when I was five years old. I was trafficked too. So I came here to speak is because I also came from some part of the struggles. And we hope with all these beautiful, strong women, uh, we can be the examples for the women and for the vulnerable women who don't have voices. And thank you very much for having me here. Thank you.